SMQB's episode 154, the most aggressive agenda we've ever taken on. This is going to be a barn burner. We've got breaking news as we go here tonight, guys. It is free agency for the NFL. It's bubble watch. It's, I don't know, everything's happening. People are getting fired in F1 and not fired and, and suspended and appeal. It's crazy. It's crazy days. Crazy, crazy. Uh, let's start with your invite to the bar. Rooster, you're up first. Well, I'm going to, it's going to be a repeat uh, customer for me, Brian Cashman. I'm going to have, I'd like to have a drink with him and ask him why he still has a job. Oh, ouch. It's considering wow. what, considering the need to rebuild the starting pitching staff and we still haven't signed Snell or Jordan Montgomery. And now Garrett Cole looks like he's probably going to have elbow surgery. So I don't know. I just don't understand why the guy's still our GM. Pope, who are you bringing? I think I'm going to have uh, King Henry over to my bar for a drink. Love to know what's going through his head now uh, and where he's thinking about going. Um, now that uh, we lost our starting running back to the Titans, is it is it possible that we could have a King Henry in Dallas? As much as we hear the rumors, uh, we can talk about this later, but it appears the Cowboys are not ready to participate in any free agency of, of uh, any, you know, substance. So I'd like to know what he's thinking, where he wants to go. You should close the deal while you have him there. So so far, you've just got well, uh, first, players out. No players that's going right? to that's going to require one, two things, either one or two things, either Dax contract where I get some cap room uh, this year or extending CD Lamb and I get some cap room. Otherwise, Cowboys okay, have two point two no, point two million. Cares. It was who are you bringing to the bar? Period. <laughs> Toby <laughs> asked. How's I gotta keep us on he track. Could bring, he could bring his offensive team. line, but they're all in the commanders now. Yeah, the Cowmanders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Else, what do you got? I toasted Jason Kelsey last week. This week, I'm going to celebrate Fletcher Cox at the bar, the greatest defensive tackle in Eagles history. Uh, should be in the Hall of Fame one day. Phenomenal, phenomenal 12 seasons. And I'm buying Fletch, even though you've made a lot of money, I'm buying to say thank you. All right, I'm bringing one Bill Raftery because it is the week of the best basketball tournament in the country, the Big East tournament this yeah, week. baby. And Organize those feet. Nobody, Organize nobody those I would feet. rather listen to talk about it than, than Raft. Uh, and that's that's who I'd like to sit down with. And, and I've actually done this at a bar with him and ha- gotten a chance to listen to him tell Big East stories. So – um, I, I'd like to invite them back, and this time I'll pay. Love it. All right, guys, we got a lot to get through. Rooster, we got to start with NFL. Are you uh, in mourning at this point? I really would. Can I? Can right. we just? We got to put House on on mute for a little while. Fuck. This otherwise might be too painful. Come on. So, Rooster, what's going on? I, I am. So, I mean, you guys know know how happy I was when we drafted the legend. No, we can I'm go back so, and listen to the pods. I'm so sorry to see him go, but you know what? We just can't afford to keep a aging uh, star superstar running back on a team with no line and no and a quarterback that we paid a, way too much for, who has had two neck surgeries and an ACL. Um, we're just in complete rebuild mode, and I think this is probably the smart decision, but it's heartbreaking to see him go. Anyway, today. I don't think I've seen so much action on the first day of NFL free agency ever. It's crazy. It's been a crazy, crazy, fast-paced day. I mean, the, we got to start with the big news. The the Las Vegas Raiders picked up Gardner yeah. Minshew. Yeah. I mean, that's just massive. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the big three. I mean, Saquon goes to the Eagles, breaks my heart, but good for the Eagles. He's going to be awesome there because you have a good line and a passing game. Kirk Cousins goes to the Falcons and immediately turns that team into a playoff contender, in my opinion. Wow. wow. That's because their division sucks. Their division sucks. They've got outstanding running backs and wide receivers. 
Yeah. And then Josh Jacobs to the Packers. The Packers have really improved themselves uh, already. Um, they they also got Xavier McKinney from the yes. Giants, who's a, who is the best available safety. Uh, yes. Free agency. Super stud. So, to, in my view, the 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 winners so far are the Eagles, Falcons, and Packers. The losers are include my Giants because uh, we keep losing our we lost our best offensive and best defensive player in one day. The Cowboys because they're a you know a contender and have done nothing. They've they've just they've had a net loss today. They've, they're losing players. The Bills lost their you know one B wide receiver and i think have a problem with their 1a um, yeah so the bills could be in trouble next season if they don't do something quick there of course now the vikings don't have a a one one a quarterback and the steelers for some reason the steelers decided oh, we don't need kirk cousins who's playing the best of his career or uh, Justin Fields, who may be on an uptick and turning into a superstar, or maybe a dud. We'll take a proven dud. We'll take Russell Wilson. I don't. Yeah. I just don't get that at all. I really don't get a it. Proven dud. <laughs> what do you? What do you guys think? What stands out to you? Well, well, let me. Let's start with the last one. I, I know you're a Russell hater, and I'm not a big Russell lover. But between Russell, Mason Rudolph, and Kenny Pickett. Who would you start? Oh, Russell every day. I, I okay. just, I, yeah. I, I, the way I framed it was the choices were Russell, Kirk Cousins, and Justin Fields. He would have been yeah. my third pick. So I, I would agree I, with that. So, wait, the Giants are signing uh, Devin Singletary. Did you oh, see yeah, that? Oh, yeah. I forgot about that massive move. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually hoping did you see, they get did you Aaron see what Jones. Tiki, what Tiki said? No. Saquon, you are dead to me. We hate you. <laughs> he oh. did an interview. He did an interview yesterday, which I saw, you know, oh. cautioning him not to go to the Eagles. You know, he was like, go to the Texans, go to wherever, but you can't go there. Like your legacy will be tarnished forever. All the jerseys in the stands, people aren't going to wear them anymore. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. It's a different NFL today. Rooster's totally gonna, he's also, Rooster's gonna he's have also a, jersey. a Penn State guy. He's also a Penn State yeah, guy. He's going exactly. Home. Rooster's leading a jersey burning Saquon party tonight. No, no, no. I love Saquon. <laughs> I'm rooting for him. I hope he does well. What do you I'm a little bit. I'm this? a little bit surprised about the Packers picking up Josh. I mean, I like Josh Jacobs, uh, but you know, a Aaron Jones had a good year last year, and God Almighty, he kills the Cowboys. So are they? I guess they're going to let him go. It looks like. Yeah, they oh, already yeah. have released him. They were in the middle of extension talks with him and signed oh. Jacobs and released Aaron Jones and probably aren't going to sign their backup guy from Boston College. Um, I'm I'm calling Dylan, I'm AJ calling Dylan. Jerry right now to tell him to sign Aaron because that guy torches us every time we yeah. play him. All right, I hope the Giants get him. I think. Yeah, what's the deal with uh, John Runyon? Wasn't he on the Eagles at one time? That's his dad. Oh, I was going to say that. Yeah. yeah. The other so run, John, John Runyon, Runyon Jr. Yeah, is he any yes. good? Bruce, you're good. exposing we, yourself. We signed him, uh, we signed oh, him as a guard him? today, yeah. And, well, I, and David Bakhtari, Bakhtiari was released by the Packers today. Yeah. Do we think he'll retire or someone will pick him up? I think he'll play a little bit longer. He definitely has some serious injury things coming off, but he's a solid left tackle. I mean, he was protecting Aaron Rodgers' backside yeah. for a long time. See, I think that's the Giants play is we can't spend money on a superstar running back when we don't have an offensive line and we have a quarterback who may not be able to be ready to play. We need wide receivers and offensive linemen. And I'm, it looks like they're trying to get the line through free agency and maybe trades. And maybe maybe they pick up Calvin Ridley later today and then draft, you know, my man, R Rome Adunze. There, there are some splashy picks for sure today, of course, headlined by Saquon and, and Cousins. But I think there's some quieter picks, and quieter moves. Uh, I do think that we know for sure the commanders are going to be drafting a quarterback now at two because I think they've beefed up their offensive line. Yep. And I don't think they have to spend there now. I think 
I think DeAndre Swift for three years with the Bears is a nice move. The Bears have made a lot of improvements in their secondary. Last year, they made the move to get Sweat, Montez Sweat. I think the Bears are if, – if the Bears get Caleb Williams uh, and give him somebody to throw to, they could get good really, really fast because they've improved, improved on the defensive side of the ball. They've got a versatile running back. You know, that was a more quiet move that was impressive. Um, I liked – so the the Raiders are weird. I mean, this sign – have scary uh, defensive line now. Yeah, I mean, Christian Wilkins is a major, major signing. They spent a boatload. One of the things that you're seeing today is what happens when you get give NFL GMs a little extra cash to play with. Because yeah. we talked about it on the pod the last week or two about the salary cap – expansion yep. now, now now you're seeing that which is why i don't understand why the cowboys have sat so pat today i understand from what your intro was pope that you need a little little bit more money but surely with this extra money that was added from the from this year's salary cap and moving some things around with with dak and cd i yeah, I mean I, I don't know i don't know if they've just been caught flat-footed or they had all along they'd planned you know, I don't think they were in love with Pollard's year last year. No. And, and uh, you know, look at Pollard signed, what, three-year, $24 million contract. So he took a hit last year franchise. He got to $11 million. Um, I mean, it's just – it's the theme that we've been talking about on the pod, that these running backs after their rookie contract are a dime a dozen. Well, the, you know, a couple of them got paid okay today. I'm what's happy Saquon's, for Saquon. What, Saquon's what's his, th- three years, thirty-seven point seven five million. We, we got six talk million about, guaranteed. So he gets twelve and a half ish. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. Which we paid him last year uh, when we tagged him. We got to talk about Baker, don't we? Milk's not Baker. here to stick up for his guy. I do listen. What was Mike that? Evans, what was Mike that Evans contract? Was, Mike Evans, hundred million, hundred million dollars, like fifty three guaranteed. years. Yeah. How much is guaranteed? Yeah. Fifty, I think. Yeah. Oh my I think, God! I think he played. I think a lot he of plays, I think he played his way into that contract. I know you don't agree, House. Go ahead. Well, Mike Evans was threatening to leave. I know Milk was really nervous about it, and the quote he gave to somebody was, "I want to be playing for a Super Bowl caliber quarterback." Now, there must have been some discussion with Mike Evans that. Right now, we're leaning on bringing back Baker Mayfield. So I want to know how how Mike Evans feels today. Like, he can get him that ring. Mike Evans is the type of player in the NFL that should get a ring before he's – well, I guess he got one with with, with, with yeah, Brady. Yeah, with Brady. Yeah, but, I mean, this guy should have a top, top quarterback. I, I, I know they beat the Eagles. And Milk would be saying that. The Eagles were depleted. They sucked. They had lost so many in a row. I, I don't – I don't see Baker as being a hundred million dollar quarterback in the NFL. Sorry, Milk. A hundred million for three. So he's a thirty-three million dollar quarterback. It's yeah. Crazy. Well, how about this one? That is crazy. Here's, here's Cousins' four year deal: a hundred and eighty million, including a hundred million guaranteed. And he's he's coming off an Achilles injury, right? So he's had he's wow. had. He's had over two hundred million dollars in guaranteed money in the course of three cool. contracts. Wow, quarterbacks yeah. are so. He got overpaid. ninety with his first quarter with his ninety guaranteed in his first contract with the Vikings. Then they re-upped, and then and then he got this. And yeah, that doesn't count what he made with the Redskins when he was tagged two years in a row. So he tagged in two years career, in a row. Yeah, in his in his career. Uh, in his career with the Vikings, setting aside because I, I don't remember him having a standout receiver. Maybe I'm forgetting, but I don't remember him having a standout. Stephon receiver in Diggs and no, oh, in, oh, and Washington. Yeah, and so Washington. I don't think who did he have in Washington? He's the best person he ever threw through to anybody. Not really. Uh, so I'm trying to remember so, who was here. I mean, I guess my point is he's been throwing to Diggs and Justin Jefferson. I, I think they made him look a lot better than he is. That's a I don't lot know. Of you know, I don't understand so much hate around Kirk Cousins. I mean, the guy has been a, a solid pro who pu- puts up good numbers in the NFL for a while. He doesn't he doesn't talk shit really. He doesn't get in any trouble. I mean, by all I mean, Peter King was them as one of the all time 
top 10 nicest guys he ever dealt with in the NFL in his entire career. Why? I mean, why? I mean, and he, he threw the we digs. We people on niceness. Digs. Well, I know, but I mean, he's, why do people hate Cousins he so He throws much? too many picks. He throws too many picks. He doesn't protect I, the ball, and he doesn't do anything in the playoffs. He's a meh quarterback. He's yeah, a I meh. Think I would rather he, have him. Tyson, a, like you said, he's just a guy. He's an A-plus. He's an A-plus during the year. Times. During the season, he's an A-plus. He makes incredibly good throws and is very efficient. He's probably a A minus in the playoffs, and then he gets to the finals. If he, he hasn't gotten to the Super Bowl, but he gets if he gets deep into the playoffs, he's just not making the big plays, and that's what sets the great ones apart. I, well, that's, that's fair. I don't disagree hits. with that. I'm not saying he's a great one, but no, I think I just he's don't great during the season, him. but not great overall because. He's, he doesn't pull out the big wins when it counts. I'll tell you, if you're Atlanta, you're excited right now. Hell yeah. If you're, yeah, if, you're if you're Atlanta, you're trying to make a trade with the Bengals to get T. Higgins. That too. I, I, that, I don't understand that. Or, or, I, or I get really, Ridley back. That, yeah, that, that too. Also, I, the T. Higgins thing is pretty mystifying for me. But it's going to be uh, interesting to see what happens to Kyle Pitts now because that's a guy who everybody thought was going to come in and set right. records in the NFL and then never really had a quarterback. I mean, look out that team and with Bijan and, and Pitts and, and London, I mean, London, yeah, Drake London. I mean, that, that offense is going to score points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And they, Listen, and they back up. Bijan's backups rushed for over a thousand yards the year before they drafted Bijan. I'd rather have cousins than Baker. So, yeah, I would too. Well, that's true. Well, that's I, I, true. I do I have to say something about the commanders, though, because it's it's probably one of the most encouraging things in a long time are the signings that we've made. We did not sign Saquon, uh, which was something that they would have gone out and done in the past for a ridiculous amount of money. Instead, we brought in uh, Zach Ertz who I've heard over and over on this podcast about what a solid guy he is and a locker room guy. He's definitely long in the tooth, but if you're trying to set a new culture in Washington, he's not a bad guy to bring into the locker room uh, in that regard. And then you bring in, um, I don't really know too much about uh, this guy from the the first cowboy we signed. Um, uh, What's his name? The the Armstrong Armstrong, Dorrance. Dorrance Armstrong. Oh, yeah, he's their he's edge defensive rusher. end. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He he had a good year last year. Yep. And then and then the center we didn't Biotis, want to pay him. Bidas is good. Biotis, he's yeah, good. You, you you bring it. I mean, that's what to me. Defensive line, offensive line. That's that's your priority, and I'm I'm pleasantly surprised to see that's what they're doing. Bison, so. did you see that Antonio Gibson is gone? He signed with the Pats. Yeah, that's okay. No room for him in that backfield. He's just, I mean, that's, that's, look, I hope he, I'm glad he got a good contract. I hope he succeeds. Seemed like a good guy. He fumbles too much and, and he just never really developed here the way they had hoped. So, all right. Uh, what else do we have on NFL? I'm trying to see what, the, what the new failure, news. the failure of Mac Jones is complete. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, apparently, Sixth rounder. Apparently in the offseason last year, they could have gotten him for a second rounder. And Belichick like held on to him. Uh by the way, there there there's there's some crazy rumor that if Belichick were to get back on the sidelines, it would be after Schoen and Dable are fired after this year and Belichick comes in to do something with the Giants again. Would you then I will move to the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> The Eagles. <laughs> well, I'll, have, I'll follow Saquon. Yeah. <laughs> follow your family, Rooster. You know where your family comes down in the NFL and the uh, East. Hey, I have bad news for you, Bison. House gave Kate a pair of Eagles sunglasses recently. She wow. asked for it. Trying Go to out buy a favor. <laughs> Go out buy a gift, Bison, if you really want. That is the family root for you. That's fucking oh, dirty. I need that to is dirty, that. man. <laughs> Need to get something for the dirty. retreat and bring it for her. Yeah. Look, it was oh, a crazy man. day. There's a lot, a lot of talent left. There's a lot of talent, 
at yeah. safety, at running back, at defensive end. There's a lot of talent. Dalvin Ridley and Derek Henry are still out there. I mean, yes. I, those are big names. Brian Burns. Brian Burns. Is mass- oh, who is he? He's Brian Burns from the Carolina Panthers. Oh. Killer end. Like, oh, yeah. killer, killer end. Yeah. I thought they re signed him. No. Wow. wow. Did that just happen? Yep. That's it's saying. Well, that's the bad. What I've got too. is uh, barring a last minute complete breakdown in negotiations, Burns will be a giant per, sur- per source. Wow. I've seen it a couple I, places here now. I mean, you guys so, really can rush the quarterback now. Yeah. Cave on. All right. Maybe anything we'll else, unleashed. NFL? Got to keep That's us it, moving baby. tonight, guys. Keep, All right. Lots of shit happening. The thing, the thing about NFL is I'm like scrolling to see what if yeah. there's something in the last 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, Pope, let's talk a little hoops. Bubble watch. Bubble watch. We'll get there in two seconds. The only thing I wanted to say was um, it looks like we may have uh, a race now for the number four uh, seed or a, or the number last number one seed because Tennessee lost to the Kentucky who I've been talking about is coming on. Nobody wants to play Kentucky and North Carolina beat Duke. And we'll talk about that later, but uh, it looks like there is now competition for that last number one seed. It'll be interesting to see what happens over the weekend. Uh, Bubble watch. Um, St. John's is uh, according to Joey Brackett's, uh, in the last four in, along with Virginia, Indiana State, and Colorado. Uh, first four out, Villanova, New Mexico. We it. New Mexico, A&M, and Iowa. Uh, next four out, Wake, Pittsburgh, Providence, and Memphis. Uh, you know the eye test, guys, on for the bubble for Virginia. It, and I know they, they got a double buy in the ACC tournament, but they just do not look like a tournament team. They have Ugh. no offense. They're unwatchable. They're just, they're just unwatchable and brutal. And I think the committee would love to to uh, to kick them out if they would lose in the first uh, game in the tournament. Um, you know, what does St. John's need to do, you Big East guys, or or Nova? How far does Nova, does Nova need to win two games? Yes, they they I think they I think Nova starts against some. Somebody easy like DePaul, somebody easy, and then they've got to win against probably Marquette or someone like that. They're going to need a top Big East win still to get in. And the same goes for Providence. Like all, all these guys, I don't think St. I think St. John's is in. I really do. I think St. John's could, well, they'll have a play in, not a play, they'll have What's, like a. Who, who do they play in the tournament? What's their bracket? They're, uh, they're, they're playing Seton Hall on in the quarter. So the, the first round um, is six through 11. Okay. So everybody above that gets a buy. So Villanova plays DePaul. That's the six 11 game. Providence plays Georgetown seven ten, and Xavier and Butler is the, is the uh, eight, nine game. So then St. John's, is the five seed and they're playing Seton Hall on Thursday. St. John's needs to win that game. I think if they lose, that could be a problem. Assuming well, that, it, assu- assuming that there are, you know, this is where you got it, the, the teams you don't really account for is the bubble that, that bust the bubble, you know, the, the right. majors where they have the, the regular season champion is should be going and then they lose uh, you know, and then you've got some six or seventh seed in a mid major that bust a bubble. So yeah. that's well, and so the problem for Villanova and Providence is so Villanova should beat DePaul, but then they got to play Marquette, right? Right. So if you're saying they got to win two, they got to they got to beat Marquette. That's that's a tough game. And likewise for Providence, if they get past Georgetown, um, then they got to beat Creighton. So those are tough. I mean. If you're yeah, saying those guys got to win too, that's <clears throat> so. So, so Indiana State lost to to Drake, and Indiana State had they won, Drake was not going to get a at large bid. Now that Indiana State lost, I think they took up one of the bubble spots. I think they get in without doing any more work, and I think they 
effectively knocked out one of the Big East teams in losing to Drake. So that hurt Villanova big time. But if they if they beat Marquette, they're in. If they don't beat Marquette, they're out. It's that's that's straightforward. Um, and that, I, that I think, sounds right. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a non bubble so, question for you, Pope. Um, Jojo Tugler for Houston. How big a loss is that, and how is that going to affect them? You think in the in March Madness? Jojo uh, Tugler. I'm not. I'm not. He's their best defender. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That was You're, a big loss for them. He broke his foot and is out for yeah. the season. Yeah. When, it, did it in the Kansas game or before? It was uh, about seven days ago. I'm not sure what. Yeah, about a week ago. Game, game it was. So they blew Kansas out like they didn't even exist without him. I don't know if if that was in the game or not. When did they play Kansas? Saturday. Oh uh, yes, yeah, yeah he was correct. out. He was definitely out. Yeah, I mean, obviously. <laughs> Losing a guy like that is going to hurt in the long run, but Houston's loaded, and uh, um, I, I don't see is, I don't see much competition for them in the Big Twelve right now. Is yeah, anybody from the ACC going to make the tournament? What's that? Is, is anybody, anybody what? Is anyone from the ACC going to make the tournament other than whoever wins the the? Yeah, well, the I ACC mean, there's tournament. there's three locks. You got Carolina, Duke, and Clemson. Those are the locks, uh, and then I mean. Uh, beyond UVA, Wake, and Pitt, nobody unless they but that's, somehow run the that's table. That's pretty good. That's pretty good for a mid-major conference to get three ah. teams in, right? <laughs> nice. They, they are you. They are pretty down, Pope, this year, right? Yeah, it, I don't know. We'll have that discussion some other time. I, I, you can't convince me that the SEC has nine teams that are better than all the teams in – in the uh, uh, ACC that aren't going to make it. I, I, I don't see how, I, go how on, the wait, SEC I go on a gets nine teams in. This, this, is, this is how football has ruined college sports because the idea that the SEC, the Big Ten, and what, the Big 12 should have all these tournament teams in them and the Big East and the ACC don't is a goddamn fucking travesty. There you the go. Big East and the Get ACC on. are basketball conferences. Those other are, are football conferences. But I, I'm sorry, I'm mortified at this. I'm mortified at the idea that Arkansas is is some great program, or that that you know, fucking Arkansas is Texas, not going to the tournament. Whatever. I mean, any of these these programs that that you know that I got to worry about Penn State basketball schools in Florida, Florida we've never heard of. Yeah, I this is this is outrageous. It's a travesty. That's why I might only watch I might only watch the Big East tournament this year. That's it. I I don't know. I might have to put my foot down on this. Well, it's going to be a boring weekend for you then. Well, I'll figure Maybe out something. Maybe you can watch to do. the Hallmark channel. I'll just bet on wrestling. There you go. All right, what else on college it. hoops? I mean, it's, it's almost all... not worth talking about at this point. So I just want to give not after you drop that bomb. <laughs> it's been a couple years, but sneak preview to our listeners: the SMQBs will be assembling together for the first weekend of the NCAA tournament. Stay tuned. There's likely to be quite a bit of content for our, our TikTok channel, our podcast, <laughs> our YouTube channel. Uh, beware, I guess is the point. And and in a related story. There may be two episodes of the SMQBs left before a complete breakdown. <laughs> our friend, our friendships almost didn't survive the first time we did that. Oh God, Nantucket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, it was close. All right, let's move All on. Right. Anything else? All right, it's time. We're at, we're we're sneaking towards opening day, the most important day of the year. Uh, and in honor, we are going to start our our bracket, our greatest baseball movie bracket challenge. We, we unveiled the seedings last week, not without some controversy. Rooster, I was so happy to hear that you were doing your homework over the weekend. Before we get into picking the, the winners here, what did you think of Moneyball? I thought it started out exceptionally strong and kind of had a weak ending. But I'd give it a A minus. All right, I'll take an A minus. I mean, come on, you didn't think the scene where 
he hits the home run to, to, for the twenty second win in a row. That wasn't just a oh yeah yeah no that was and... that was awesome. And then at, from that point on, you know, watching Brad Pitt lying in the outfield grass trying to make up his mind about whether he's going to take twelve and a half million <laughs> to join the Red Sox. It's like, come on, man. All right. <laughs> All know. right. Well, let's get to it. Does anybody have anything else they want to say before we vote on these? We start uh, unveiling the, the, the first round here. Can you just tell us the process real quick? Are we just voting just the first round? Just the and, first round. And do we have and a, a single, procedure? There's a tie? Well, fucking Milk will have to break it. We He's not here. So. All right. It works better when everybody logs in. Milk. What's the first match? All right. The first one is Field of Dreams, the one seed, versus 61 asterisk. I mean, with apologies to the Maris family. And that, that that game's toast. Do we, we yeah. even need the committee to discuss no. that? I don't no. think so. All right, that's a, that's a 4 0, right? Roger Maris okay. was a great story. I wouldn't say that was a great movie. Field of Dreams was. <laughs> well, well done. All right. Uh, then the two Bull Durham versus 15 for the love of the game. This is going to be easy. Yeah, yes, it, it's a no contest. Bull Durham I, is all time classic. Somebody remind me what for the love of the game was about. Yeah, I don't know, but it was in there. <laughs> <laughs> that was a milk nomination. Okay, that was a good one. That was a milk yeah. nomination. That was one of milks for kids nominations. All right. The the three seed is the natural versus million dollar arm. Uh, I vote the natural. I, that's I my even, number one. I don't even yeah. know what million dollar arm is. I mean, the, it, we don't even need to discuss considering the natural is a top ten all time movie. All right. Okay. Well, listen. These are the these are the top seeds. So this is yep, going. Yep, you know, it's yep, all yep. talk so far. This is easy. Right. We haven't had a contest yet. No upsets yet. Uh, well, yeah, they're here, coming. They're coming. There. Yeah. All right. The four seed Moneyball versus the rookie. Is that the uh, Dennis Quaid movie? I think so. Yeah, where he comes back later in life. I, yeah, I think yeah. something like that. Yeah, sweet something movie. Stupid. Not in the category of Moneyball, though. I vote Moneyball. No. Moneyball. Do we have any? Moneyball uh, it is. These are all right, shutouts. So the top so four far. seeds hold for him. That's oh. fine. That's, Where, I guess the, I guess the seating the seating guy did okay on the top four. Oh, yeah, easy, yeah, easy, yeah, easy, yeah, yeah, easy, yeah. easy, easy. All right. Yeah. All right. Here the ever the ever you should have that guy make your F one picks for you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Fair. All right, Dick. Uh, <laughs> here's the always problematic five versus twelve. At number five, a league of their own versus the bad news bears. Oh, oh that's it. Now that's a tough one. Give me yeah, bad news bears. Go. Give me Absolutely. bad news bears. Absolutely the bad yeah, news. Yeah, but the, I mean, but a league of their own is a classic. There, you know, there's yeah. no crying in baseball. There's no crying in baseball. Yeah, that was a good. I'm going with the bad news bears, but the league of their own is a good movie. It's, All right, well, that's going to put the Bad News Bears through. I'm going to give a League of Their Own a vote, though, just so that they don't get scummed Of course here. you did. Of course you did. Well, wait, so did Brewster. Oh. So is it 2-2? Two, two? No, 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 no. I went with the Bad no. News Bears. Oh, big yeah. upset. Classic. Yeah. The, I told you, the five twelve. I mean, Walter Matthau drinking You're right, a beer Bison. in the dugout yeah. with six-year-olds. Yeah. I mean, we, we might preview a little of the March Madness, but five twelve is definitely a matchup to watch, whether it be here or the – bracket for the yeah. baseball <laughs> that's right all right next is the six seed major league versus the 11 seed trouble with the curve major league major league it's gonna it's a great movie yeah. it's underrated it sh should be better yeah. than a six seed yeah loved it the shot four oh for major league although Wild trouble Wild with the curve has got some good good scenes in it um uh, all right next we've got to go to so that's the seven ten eight men out versus the pride of the yankees was that like 1932? 40-something. <laughs> yeah. It's Gary, Gary Black Cooper, Black and white, right? Gary Cooper. Oh, really? Is, Again, is, the topic, the subject matter was awesome. Movie's kind of dull. What, what was man, the other? Out. I'm going to go uh, against I, my Yankees and say eight it, men out. Isn't eight men out the, the uh, Shoeless Joe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black, Black Sox. Black Sox? Oh, that's, yeah. that's Black a good Sox. movie. That's a good yeah. movie. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So we got that through. And now we got to go to uh we left see, with the eight nine. The eight, nine. eight nine. Eight eight nine is number eight, the sandlot versus nine forty two. I don't have an opinion on that, really. Strong. The Sandlot is such a classic. It's a coming-of-age movie. You're you're killing me, Smalls. I mean, there are so many great lines That's from true. that. The, that it's, fat uh, catcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just... All right, I need to I need to rewatch Sandlot before next week. You I'll, do I'll, need it. It does. You did remind me, though, of... Uh, yeah, I did like that movie, so let's. I'll go with it. 42 is an important movie, and uh, I'm... The actor is the guy who died recently. He was black, played Black Panther. Oh, um, uh, Boswick, right? Yeah. yeah. Chad Boswick. Yeah, I'm going to vote for Chad, 42. Chad Boswick. All right, so are you giving your vote to 42? Yes. All right, so it's going to be 3-1 Sandlot. Squeaking through. All right, so we have one upset, the 12 seed. Yeah, so here's what we got next week, just as a preview and a uh, reminder to go ahead and uh, let us know what you think on on uh, social. But we got the one seed Field of Dreams squaring off with the eight seed The Sandlot. We mm. have the two seed Bull Durham taking on the seven seed Eight Men Out. Mm-hmm. The three six is The Natural versus Major League. Whoa, Ooh, ouch! Mm. The the four twelve. Now this is the interesting one. Moneyball versus the Bad News Bears. Oh, there's well, be that's some a discussion. big contrast there. Yeah, I think that's, that's a big discussion. There you go. That's an easy call. That's where we are. Tough All one right. is the natural against Major League. Oh, okay. Interesting. Because you're previewing. Yeah, because the se- yeah the seating committee really screwed this one. So now we okay, we got to deal with this. I don't know. I think we got some interesting ones there. So I think the seating the seating committee this of one like- did great. Duke playing Kentucky in the Sweet 16. House, talk to us about what the fuck is happening at Red Bull. Okay, if if you don't Is there anything any, new? I mean, look, if you don't pay attention to F1, just satisfy yourself, listeners, by reading the story that is going on. Like, it is so mind-blowing. I've never heard of anything like this in sport. It all started that essentially what would be the coach of their team, basically the manager, the team principal that runs all the racing strategy and decisions, Christian Horner of Red Bull, was accused of inappropriate behavior. And for weeks, it seemed like weeks, it was probably about a week that it dangled out there, like what exactly did it do? Did he do? There was like rumored that he was just being a mean guy and he was being abusive, that it was sexual in nature. And... The next thing you know, without it ever really being revealed what it was that he did, he was cleared. There was there was a hearing that was held in the arbitration of sport or whatever it was, and he was just cleared. And it's like, okay, before the first race gets underway, Christian Horner's cleared. Let's move on with the season. That's that. Cleared then, by the team. Cleared by the team. Cleared by the corporate parent. And everybody, every, it seemed everything was fine. And then right. just before the first race was going to happen in Bahrain, there was a leak of a hard, like a, a, a drive, a, a folder of all the files that were like the Christian Horner files. A bunch of it was goofy stuff. Um, it was a lot of improper messages internally from Horner to a female employee on the team, very flirtatious, very pushy, but it wasn't like as loose as some stuff that you've heard before. Then uh, after that, uh, then there was also like a picture of him shirtless. There was a picture of him singing at a bar drunk. Then the shit really hit the fan. Then it became crazy. Uh, Helmet Marco, who I guess what would you what would you give the uh, the equivalent of what you would call Helmet Marco, like a general manager? I mean, how would you describe Helmet Marco's role for for Red Bull? He like, sounds like the consigliore to uh, the owners yeah. and Max. 
He's he's like not the race day or, or like yes. on the track decision maker, but he's like this very high executive within the company. And apparently, Max Verstappen, who's the best driver in the world, supposedly goes where Marco goes. The two of them are a package. And now the rumor is that that Marco doesn't like Horner. And Marco wants to leave, and that means if Marco leaves, Verstappen leaves. So now, like we're and, in and Verstappen's dad one. doesn't like Warner. And Josh Verstappen. Oh, and, and the rumor, the rumor is that Helmut, I call him Darko, is the one that leaked the material. Yes. So that was next. It turns out. So then, after that, then the crazy thing is the woman who is. It's very clear that she is on the losing end of this improper power battle with, with. Uh, Christian Horner, they suspend her. They suspend her from Red Bull for reasons that are still like, I have no clue how it is that Red Bull has the balls to suspend her. And then they threaten to suspend Marco. So you're like, okay, Christian Horner really has some crazy power, crazy power. All the while, Mercedes is lying in wait because Verstappen supposedly is going to leave Red Bull. This is, this is like... I don't know what it's like, like LeBron, you know, the best of the best, just getting up and leaving in the middle of their contract to leave it, for another it team. Would, it would be like Jordan leaving the Bulls. Yes, it I really mean, would be. Well, 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 when in, right now in 90, in 94. Yes. When, after when, after when, like two titles. When there was right. talk of, of, uh, of suspending the leaker, what's his last name? Marco. Marco. Um, for leaking, Max came out and made it implicitly clear that if they get rid of him, Max is gone. And then when given the opportunity to defend Horner, Max remained silent. And, and none of this none of this is about money. Max has paid a shit ton of money. He signed for several years. You know, all the while, Ginger Spice, who is Jerry Hollowell, who's married to uh, Christian Horner, is showing up to the first two races looking like a Stepford wife in like a hostage video. Like she's, t he's got his arm around her at, at the track while they're like raising the trophy. And she, she's like blinking with her eyes. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be my lover. And the whole thing is just like, this is all playing out while they're still racing. Now the latest is the latest is in this whole power struggle that we now have a couple weeks off to the next race, I think March 24th or something like that in Australia, that Christian Horner is rumored to be fired by the March 24th race. I mean, man, this is... Have you seen Have you seen anything other than that one very, report this morning, though? There were there's a copycat report of it. Just a copycat report of that, yeah. I saw. I'll, I'll hold my breath. This is all like... This is all like happening for the very, very best team in the sport. Look, corporate Red Bull parent knows that Christian Horner is the face of Red Bull, and they are not going to get rid of him. Really? I think he win. I think he wins. And really? Struggle with Max. Oh, I don't. I, I think, think Max. It's a question is I posed: Is Red is Red Bull no. bigger than Max, or is Max bigger than Red Bull? Red Bull can win without Christian Horner. They cannot win without Max. Not the way yeah. they have been. Not the way they have been. Well, it's I mean, what's so again, funny about so this. So we get back to how the many car or the driver. Yes, I mean, yes. how many times right? has Pope said, how many times has Pope said, let's, let's like line them all up in the same car and see who wins. Let's find out car or driver. We actually might find out what happens if somebody else gets put in the same seat of the car that Max is sitting in right now, can they still take it to 10 second victories? Well, the guy maybe who used 10, to be maybe eight, <laughs> the guy who used to occupy Max's stratosphere, Lewis Hamilton, I think has lost a step and he's now in the same car as George Russell. And he pretty consistently finishes below George Russell. Yeah. Sergio Perez is in the same car as Max. He's supposedly a top three driver in the world. He finishes 19 seconds behind Max in most races. Yeah. 
So it's wild. If well, you're not in the F1, it might be worth it. It's the funny thing is Red Bull is finishing yeah. one, two, so far ahead of everybody else. There would otherwise be very little intrigue in the sport right now, but it's like just dripping right now with this drama. It's well, what, what happened? I mean, if 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 Christian goes, does that team fall apart this year? Or know. is the car so good? Do engineers leave? Do people leave because Christian Lee? I mean, th- there could be a lot of fallout from that. I, I don't think I don't think we know the answer to that. There's some reason that corporate Red Bull wants to keep Christian Horner in place. And if you're Haas, do you say, "Hey, Christian, <laughs> well, how much do you want?" <laughs> Haas. Haas. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't I don't see that happening. Uh, yeah. But or, or Alpine I don't, I don't or Williams. Bill, G- Gene Haas won't pay him. Um, well, you know, it's, it's wildness. It's wildness. You have literally one of the most dominating teams put together, completely self-immolating at this point. So it's wild. good stuff. It's, it's the most intriguing part of, uh, F1 these days. So For sure. uh, pay attention. I can't wait to see, uh, drive to survive next year. Oh my God. All right. Yeah. Rooster, you got a bourbon for us? I do. Um, I reacquainted myself with this one when I was at the Combine. And so I'm going to talk to you about the founding father of the bourbon industry, Colonel Edmund Hayes Haynes Taylor Jr. Hmm. Colonel E.H. Taylor, small batch bourbon. Uh, This stuff is still made by hand when you get the small batch in warehouses that are over 100 years old and it like all of the ones that i like the most has a little hint of caramel and butterscotch as your initial taste and then it's got a little kicker in the aftertaste that you don't really get from the other two that i talked about uh it's just like a combination of peppery spice and almost like a tobacco a tobacco aftertaste Mm. so you you know you get a little bit of both with this one it's strong though. It's a good one. Did, did you say the Can we see price? the bottle? Uh, don't have it with me. No, I'm at the oh, office. Sorry. Okay. Got it. Did you say the bottle price? Uh, anywhere from 150 to 130 uh, a bottle for the small batch. Okay, Ooh. so this is you, the price. you can get it on sale in the 120s. And and if someone would be interested in going to visit E. H. Taylor, they would find them where Rooster. Uh, I'm guessing in Kentucky, where you find all of them. I don't know. Buffalo <laughs> Trace. Precisely, yeah. Oh, there another oh, Buffalo Trace. Oh, are they really? What a, what, what a coincidence. What a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's Absolutely. Funny. All right. Um, okay. Who's got a punch this week? Oh, I got one. You go first. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can see it right behind me. You YouTube mm, good one. followers. Oh good one. I got Kyle Tripaflowski or uh, Flipakowski, <laughs> whatever his name is, <laughs> doing his best Grayson Allen imitation uh, as Harrison Ebram tries to get untangled from uh, <laughs> from a play. And, um, you know, this was played over and over again. And I'm going to punch Teddy Valentine, too, the referee, who – for whatever reason, he's got it out against Carolina, always has. But he was standing right there and looked at it as as uh, Flipowski threw his foot up, his leg up, and tripped Ingram. And it was obvious to everyone who was watching the game, other than maybe the Cameron Crazies, we'll talk about them in a second, that that was an intentional trip. And Harrison even went up to uh, Teddy Valentine. He's like, you didn't see that? That was a trip. And he goes, I didn't see anything. So – um you know, this this is not the first time that a Duke player uh, has tripped a North Carolina player or other players who come into Cameron Stadium. Uh, and, and the other punch I reserved is for the Cameron Crazies. I've always kind of had respect for them. I mean, they're very creative. Uh, you know, it's college basketball spirit at its best. I mean, they live like for a month in a third world shanty outside and Kville or whatever they call it for just to get just to get tickets to go to the Carolina game and you know you kind of respect that but uh lately it seems like they're uh I don't know their decor is a little bit uh 
below what you would expect or hope from a school like Duke. Um, there's plenty of video going around uh, with the players yelling. I mean, excuse me, with the guys in the uh, stadium in the stands yelling at R.J. Davis as he's shooting pre uh, pregame. Uh, saying that uh, they want to kill him uh, yeah. and some other things um, during the game. You got to understand that the, the uh, atmosphere at Cameron is that the, that the students are literally like, I mean, you see where the guys putting the ball in, in play and the students almost can reach their hand out and touch the back of the Jersey of the team at player if they want to. And so they were uh, really brutal on Cormac Ryan. They're talking about his Irish heritage, his family, his, Mm. you know just things that they shouldn't be saying and this was not you know just north carolina people noting it there were observers there columnists who were like you know it was <clears throat> it was really out of hand and so when cormac started making the threes and you know t telling the crowd to shush it just got worse so at the end of the game uh after carolina won um, they were probably uncarolina like and, uh, you know my wife and i talked about this kind of uncarolina like by taunting and and waving at the Cameron crazies as they're walking off the court and their response was they started throwing water bottles and water and other stuff at the players uh they soaked like the first row of the press row you know you could see videos with uh, water on the laptops um they were you know spraying water on the players into the crowd uh it's just, you know, it's gotten a little out of hand, and, and it's it's really rich coming from Duke where they're like, oh, the court storming, you know. Uh, Tripoflowski almost uh, had a career-ending injury, and yet he's able to come back a couple weeks later and do what he did. So I, I'm punching I'm punching Tripoflowski, I'm punching Teddy Valentine, the ref, and I'm punching the Cameron Crazies. Get your shit in order. Um, That's a really good one. Well deserved. I have to stay in college basketball for another punch. Uh, it's on the women's side, and so we are talking about punchable face of the week. It's just, it's a term. It's a term. But uh, if y'all didn't see yesterday's ending, and I say y'all because we're about to go to the SEC, if you didn't see the ending of LSU versus South Carolina women's basketball, uh, these are the Last two NCAA women's champions, South Carolina two years ago and LSU last year. And there's definitely a rivalry and they definitely feel they're, they're the best in the country. And towards the end of the game, uh, this Camilla Cardoso on South Carolina, a big power forward center on South Carolina, pushed a smaller player on LSU, Flaugé Johnson, and total bedlam ensued. Hang on. Pushed? She, she knocked, she her, knocked her ass on the, on the court. She, 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 probably she, had, she probably had she, 70 pounds on that oh one. Oh, my Lord. Fucking trucked her. I mean, it was, <laughs> it, was an, it, was, it was an aggressive shove. But here's Remember when we were talking she, about me tackling um, King Henry? That's what, it was, that's what it looked like. Yeah. <laughs> Eh, eh, then like a brawl the ensued. She got jacked and, up. <laughs> and I think Flaugé's brother jumped out of the stands. And it was it was total wild craziness. After the game, both of the coaches were interviewed. These are two of the best-known coaches in women's basketball today. Kim Mulkey, former coach of Baylor, now coach of LSU. And Dawn Staley, who is probably taking the reins as the the number best. one, yeah, the best. I mean, she's uh, an Olympic champion. She's won, she's won almost everything at this point. And she's very classy. And she basically took it on the chin and said, I apologize. This is not what should happen in our sport. And I apologize for my players. I apologize for the game. Kim Mulkey gets to a press conference and basically doesn't apologize and instead says, you know what? Uh, Cardoso, what she, I, I would have liked to have seen her push Angel Reese and then see what happens, which is just such a trashy response. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, you don't hear that. You don't hear that in the men's game. You don't hear that in the women's game. This has nothing to do with gender. It's just not classy. You're the defending national champion. 
uh, you've got an integrity of a sport. You're setting the, these are still supposedly amateur athletes who are young adults. You know, they're 18 to 21 years old. Take the podium and say, this does not belong in our game. This does not belong in any game. Things get heated. Sorry, Kim Mulkey, but you're getting our PFOTW. <laughs> I can't say she's a drama. You know, she. I've never liked her. We, we. I think we gave her a little something once before over the way she treated Angel Reese earlier this season. And and um, Brittany Griner. Yeah, yes. Brittany Griner too. Yes. Yes. She's she's constantly getting punched. She's she's a huge drama queen. She wants it all to be all about her and not her players. Yeah. Well, House, you know that South Carolina player had made a three-pointer at the end of her first ever attempted three-pointer, banked it in the night before against Tennessee just to get South Carolina to that game, and she was which being preserved, lauded. Which, pres- which also preserved their undefeated, undefeated season. season. Yeah, yeah, just she was being lauded for that, and then she turns around and trucks that LSU player and you know loses all of whatever she had gained. Well, she, and she's, and and she's and sitting she, out the first game of the she NCAA. Also, she she also made a very appropriate apology and took she full responsibility. Too. I saw yeah. that. Yeah. Hey, and is being punished did, for it. By the way, did, did, did you see the guy who jumped out of the stands too? Yeah, that that's, the the that's the brother. Of oh, that's the yeah. brother. The one who got okay. knocked down. The yeah. one brother of the one who got knocked down. By the way, if, the the, if this had happened in a men's game, other than the part about the guy jumping out of the stands, people, it, people wouldn't be so – fired up about it it'd be business as usual so what there was a scuffle after a basketball game yeah i i yeah i kind of with you i watched it and i kept thinking this was the massive brawl that they were talking about yeah, i right. thought it was gonna be like if it weren't for yeah, the like, size difference between the two players it would, be, it would have been nothing like that the old t-ball Pete, player like put PG. a hit on the on the pitcher the other day that was just as good. yeah that's so, right, yeah, we were that's watching. right. <laughs> all right any other punches no all right, I got a lasso I want to do. And uh, I'm going to be a little bit of a homer on this one. This is about Georgetown basketball. But it's not about the men's program. Um, the Georgetown women's team has, it, it, it kind of seemed like it was going somewhere at one point. And then they had some internal issues and the coach got canned and it kind of just completely fell apart from there. And uh, last April, Georgetown hired uh, a woman named Tasha Butts, and Tasha had played at um, at Tennessee, and she was an assistant coach at Georgia Tech, uh, and she got the Georgetown job in April. And uh, there, there's, you know, she came in, she laid down some rules for the program. You know, we don't eat at meetings. We don't look pull our phones out of our pocket at team meetings. We go to class. She just came in and and she prided herself on being a a player's coach. Uh, and you know th- there wasn't any any big excitement that she was going to turn the program around immediately. Georgetown was picked to be uh, number I think ten out of eleven, or I guess ten out of eleven this year in the Big East, Big East for the women. So you know it wasn't like this was going to salvage the program or something, but there was some excitement. And I think the kids were excited to have a new opportunity with a coach who they liked and who would, you know, she played, I guess, in the WNBA for a minute. And um, so she was, you know, did the the whole summer league, what they do, whatever they're allowed to do um, for NCAA practices and um, really had developed a great rapport with the players uh, and and everybody was excited for the season. And then on October 22nd, she died of breast cancer. Mm. And two weeks before she got to be the, the head coach uh, and, and coach her first game, two weeks before the season started. And there's all sorts of stories about her, you know, watching film uh, in, in the hospital with the players in her room, watching film with her and, and, um, well, yesterday, so I, the, the guy who came on is uh, Daryl Haney, and Haney had, had known her, and she convinced him to come be an assistant uh, on the team. He, 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 in fact, I, I saw an interview with him where he was saying that he had reached out to her originally because he wanted one of his 
old assistants to get the assistant job at Georgetown. And uh, she didn't think that was the right mix, but she brought him in. Well, the team that was supposed to be 10th out of 11 in the Big East, uh, playing with the the T-shirts on that say Tasha Tough, uh, is playing for the Big East Championship tonight against UConn. Wow. There's wow. something like 20, 24 and 10, maybe 22 and 10 this year. Uh, it'll obviously be a huge upset to beat UConn and win the win the tournament and they might need to do that to get into uh into the big ncaa tournament still even with what's a pretty good record um but it's just it's it's quite a story it's a team rallying around uh, a coach who really never even got to coach a game for them and so i'm giving the georgetown women's basketball team the the lasso and hoping they win tonight and and get that, you know, finish the dream off with uh, Tasha Tuff looking down on them. Good story. Good luck to them. Very nice. Yep. Yeah. So, all it right. It was a good game, too. I watched it with my daughter. Yeah, it was a good game, right? It was, mm-hmm. it was uh, yeah, and it was, you know, it was a big upset. So, we'll see. See what they can do. It'd be, it'd be quite a story if they were to knock off UConn. So, who's got a buzzer beater? I've got oh. one that follows that. But go, in, go ahead if you weren't ready to go, Pope. No, no, no. Go ahead. Follow up. So, like I said, I was watching the um, Big East tournament, women's tournament with my daughter. And I just wanted to follow up on where, where we were last week talking about Caitlin Clark and others. Women's basketball really is exciting. It's fun to watch right now. And the Big, Big East tournament was amazing. Uh, Georgetown played Creighton, which is which is a good team, and beat them uh, 55 to 46 to go on and play UConn. UConn smoked Marquette, but the exciting thing is Paige Beckers is back. She's she's overcome all of her terrible injuries and is back stroking threes. UConn's a fun team to watch again. Um, and then you know we already talked about the LSU. South Carolina game. That was a hell of a game. And then the other one we we kind of alluded to last week was USC with this new phenom freshman, Juju Watkins. They came in in, in the Pac-12 conference tournament, ranked five in the country, and faced off against Stanford, ranked two, and beat Stanford um, 74 to 61. I mean, it's, it's just fantastic basketball all weekend. If if you if you watched nothing but women's basketball, you would have been highly entertained. And that's, did you see that's the end of the see. Iowa Ohio State game and I, Caitlin Clark again? No, yeah. I didn't. She, she did it again. <laughs> she had she had four points at halftime, scored thirty in the second half, including a I don't know how far back that three point shot was to uh, send it into overtime, and then yep. she stole the ball in overtime to take that. I mean, she's. Definitely the best I've ever seen. I, I confess I haven't seen a ton of women's basketball, but when I turn it on to see the superstars, watching Caitlin Clark is just wow. She's got and ice I, in her veins. She I hope reminds me of Larry Bird. I, I mean, I hope it's like Iowa and you know South Carolina, South Carolina and LSU and maybe even USC UConn, I mean, I hope, or, or UConn. I hope all these make it to the end because I think people will turn in yeah. and watch. Too much. Yeah. Yep. All right, my uh my buzzer beater is golf. We're now getting into the fun season. The players is coming up next weekend, but before that, I don't know if anybody saw yesterday, but Scotty Schiffler with a amazing tour de force shot a sixty six at Bay Hill, birdie, uh, a bogey free. Nobody else in the field came close. Won by five strokes. Putting has been his big issue for the last couple of years. Prevented him from probably taking it to the next level, even though he's number one. He hadn't won in a while, and he hadn't won a major in a while. Uh, but uh, everybody beware. His putter was on fire yesterday. He made uh, putts, didn't miss a putt under 15 feet. So um, the players should be really interesting. There's two groupings to watch. Uh, you got Scotty, uh, Ricky, and JT in one, and uh, Victor Hovland, McElroy, and Spieth in another, not to mention the best field in golf. So uh, – Players always number seventeen, the the best uh, the best entertainment coming up. You you know, cool 
whole part of that story with Scotty Scheffler and the putter is that uh, Rory had said either last week or the week before, I would love to see Scotty Scheffler play with a mallet putter. Mallet, Because he, yep. he played with a blade before that. His first tournament with a mallet putter was yesterday. Yep. So Rory just created – isn't that crazy? I mean, Roy just created a monster. Yeah, yeah blame, blame Rory. So, did they do they have a deal yet with Liv? Is that still just a, a no. total mess? No, not even close. All right, my mess. buzzer beater is also in college sports. Uh, I do want to give a shout out, as I do every single year. We're about to start in two weeks the NCAA wrestling championships this year in Kansas city. I have to again say this Penn state dynasty to watch them is the most incredible thing. They there's, there's not even really a second best conference. It's big 10 and almost nothing else between Penn state and Iowa and Ohio state and even Rutgers and Michigan, Northwestern, Wisconsin, Nebraska this year is very good. There's so many good teams in Big Ten wrestling. Penn State had the largest margin of victory ever, the most champions ever, and that's with one of their number one wrestlers that was out with injury. He'll be back for the tournament, but Kale Sanderson and Penn State, incredible. And finally, almost worthy of a lasso, the Ollie Bierman story in uh, F1 racing Here's a guy who was supposed to race this weekend in the junior race, basically what they call F2, Formula 2. And the main driver for Ferrari, Carlos Sainz, has appendicitis, emergency appendectomy. Beerman, you got to get in the, uh, the seat for Ferrari. And what does the 18-year-old kid do? He runs to seventh place, which is very, very special in your first race in a brand new car. Uh, it was they drove great, the hell out of it too. I mean, he had some great really story good to moves. Watch, holding off Lewis Hamilton, the, the afterwards, and hugging his dad. I mean, dream come true. Just very, very cool story. He may not drive again this season because he's he's on that you know second the junior team. Uh, so barring an injury or something happened, he's not going to race again this year. He gets one shot at it and he doesn't miss. It was awesome. Leclerc he's, came out today and said he thinks he'll have a, a, that that Beerman will yeah. have a seat this season. Yeah, he might a slap in the face to his partner. I don't know. <laughs> well, there's other, there's other, no, 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 other yeah. Who, who, the Lewis? Ferrari engines. No, uh, yeah, right. Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> well, Beerman was going to be my buzzer beater, so we're good. Anybody out of anything else? Sorry there. Any, any updates on, uh, on football while we've been sitting here? Anybody, any new si- signings? Uh, yeah, looks I haven't like seen the, anything yet. Looks like the, the Cowboys have it. big. Cowboys haven't done shit in the last half hour, so that's not a surprise. All right. Well, good luck to your teams in free agency. Um, watch your baseball movies. Do your homework, fellas. I appreciate Rooster doing his last week. Good job, Rooster. And uh, go Hoyas. See you all. Go Nova. <laughs>